My name is Phil Foster. Welcome to another episode of the Growth, Growth Cast. The Ghost Cast. Man, I'm getting horrible with this stuff. I've been talking all line, online all day. It's like been back-to-back stuff, but it's been great. Been talking with a lot of good gents. Today is November 7th, 2021. Can you believe it? There's 18 days until Thanksgiving. I cannot even believe it. Today's topic is going to be why your children need to see you train, specifically in the gym. Why your children need to see you train, specifically in the gym. So episode 18 of the Growth Cast, it's the savage way to take what you want in health, wealth, and relationships. My name is Phil Foster. If you're just tuning in, welcome. Or if you watch later down the road after it's been posted to the YouTube channel, you can reach me at Phil Foster underscore on Twitter and on Instagram. You can also reach me through the channel directory there on my channel. Uh, you can find me on TikTok at Phil Foster underscore. I am around if you want to talk hormones, training, nutrition, whatever, hit me up, book a call, whatever you'd like to do. I would love to do that with you. So today's topic, why your children need to see you train in the gym. This should be pretty self-explanatory for folks, but unfortunately it's not. And I'll tell you why. Uh, Unfortunately, in this day and age, we are suffering from a massive epidemic, and that epidemic happens to be obesity. The sad part is, is it's childhood obesity. It's the saddest part. That's the most tragic part of this whole deal. Uh, If you look at pictures from the 80s, 70s, and late 60s, people weren't overweight. That's because our nutrition strategies and what we ate were vastly different than what we eat now. I'm going to adjust this camera a little bit. There we go. Maybe that meant a little bit better. So with that said, you know, in the way that our nutrition strategies and the foods that we eat now are so heavily engineered by the industrial food complex, Cargill being the number one committer of why America is fat. Let me go ahead and put that out there now. I'll probably get banned. Cargill will see this and say, oh my gosh, we got to, we got to shoot him down. That's okay. I'll just start another channel. But Cargill, believe it or not, is responsible for a majority of the obesity epidemic because what happens, people like to eat good foods, sweet foods, fattening foods, and Cargill is in control of primarily all of the industrial food complex. So with childhood and obesity in mind and understanding why it's so important if you're a father and why your children need to see you train. I mean, once again, like I said earlier, when I first started the stream tonight, it's pretty self-explanatory of why. However, these reasons why I'm going to reveal to you, I need to say it again. Let me send this message to my woman real quick. Issue number one, if you're a man and you have children, it is your duty Let me repeat it. It is your duty to lead your tribe in a fashion that brings more to society than takes from it. Your children are going to follow your example. Your children are going to implement the strategies that you teach them, whether that's in business, relationships, whatever that might be, your children will follow your example. I will tell you, um, I will tell you, that when you fail to lead your family, your children follow a sad, sad, sad road to adulthood. If you are a weak father, and what I mean by weak is a man that is not physically or mentally capable to handle himself on the day-to-day, you are letting your children down 100%. Your children need you to show them the right and wrong ways of life. I don't believe in free range parenting. I don't believe in letting your children find out the hard way. I do believe it is your duty as a father to teach them the right and wrongs of this world. I will tell you, I will tell you that when children look to their parents for leadership and you fail them, they are going to look other places. It is your duty as father of your children to do this. So why is it so important for you to train if you have kids? Well, let's face it. If there's a childhood 
obesity epidemic in this country. It is your duty to show your children a better way. So if you are overweight or if you are out of shape or if you haven't hit the iron and you've let it go since high school, you know, those those old stories that people like to say, well, back in the day, back in my college days, I was this, that and the other thing. I will tell you that now that you're a grown man and you're not in college and you haven't touched a weight in 10 years, it is time for you to pick the weights up, my friend, and get back to work. Your children are watching you. Um, it is your duty to show them the way, okay? Because if you're strong, both physically and mentally and emotionally, your children will carry those traits with them as they mature and progress in this world. It is your masculine duty as a man to lead by example in, for your tribe, especially your children. I always tell my daughter, she's 17 and a half. She's a great kid. She just makes these little these little silly airs every once in a while. And I will tell you, she's just like every other teenage child out there. She just, you know, we all thought we knew something back in the day as well when we were teenagers. And, you know, she's in that position right now in life. It's kind of funny. It's humorous to watch her go through these little bumps and grinds in life. But I will tell you, I will tell you that since I started training and she started following my example and got into the gym, she started becoming stronger. She's overcome massive obstacles and she is built differently than most kids are today she is a very physical individual when she gets in the gym and she likes to hit that iron um, and it ebbs and flows because you know kids they have that um shall we say that short-term memories you know that short-term uh span of attention short short short-term span of attention i guess is what you could call it and kids need that direction from you at that point if you see your kids slacking off hey Come with me to the gym. I'll show you the way again. So as dad, if dad is mentally and emotionally and mentally strong and physically fit, his children will be the same because they will emulate what dad is doing. It is your duty if you are fat, weak, out of shape, or non-caring and too busy scrolling Facebook or whatever social platform you choose to consume and swilling the garbage all the time, I'm here to tell you right now, uh, it is 100%, 100% your responsibility to correct those behaviors. They need to see you in the gym. Society as a whole needs you as a father to hit the iron. We need you strong. We need that kind of change in society today. It is your job as a masculine man to express yourself through masculine things. Weight training happens to be one of those things. So your kids are going to start seeing you hitting the gym. If you're overweight or out of shape or you haven't hit the iron in a, in, in a while, your kids are going to see you and they're going to say, geez, dad's been, dad's been real consistent with going to the gym. I wonder what that's all about. I'm here to tell you right now. I'm here to tell you right now. They will start following your lead. There is a childhood obesity epidemic in this country that is unprecedented. You can get in your car and go anywhere and you can look left. You can look right. And I guarantee you. I guarantee you, your heart is breaking for half of these kids that you see on the day to day. And you just, I just can't get my head around it. And it's because their fathers have not shown them a better way. They have not shown them a way to be physically strong, which will in turn make them mentally strong. <clears throat> what they are, they have become a, a, a whole, there's like a whole horde of these kids, unfortunately, that they're more satisfied with life with. Uh, the, the quick dopamine hit of the phone or the tablet when mom and dad start them out at like four or five years old. Here's the phone. Don't bother me. Uh, here's the phone. Do this. I'm here to I'm here to tell you right now. It is your responsibility responsibility as a father to change that 100 percent. Jimmy G says, sadly, the bar is really set that low. Jimmy G, it is 100 percent that low. And it is so sad to see these kids these days. They just are so lost when it comes to the dopamine on this, or it could be, I think one of the big ones that these kids like to play is Fortnite. Now, you know, they get caught up on these online games or they play PlayStation and what do they want to do? They want to snack. They want the Cheetos. They want the soda. They want the Zuzus and the Wham Whams from the cupboard. Uh, no meaningful meals with mom and dad. And I hear, I'm here to tell you right now, it all starts with dad showing the way. It takes dad, the father of the family, 100% to show the way. And it's guys like Jimmy G, man. He is like, he has crushed it in the gym. He's got two beautiful daughters. 
that are just outstanding human beings. I mean, he's always sharing stuff on our private Facebook page and it's an amazing journey to watch with him and his children. And that's because he is showing them the way. And that's the thing right there is understanding that you are in, in control 100% and your kids need to see you in the gym. OK, because then they're going to say they're going to start questioning, OK, well, why is dad always in the gym? But so and so's dad always on always on the couch watching college football on Saturdays and Sunday night football. And it's always takeout and pizza. You know, your kids are going to start questioning these things. And that's where you swoop in and you let those kids know, hey, that's because this is the better way to be. And as they start to implement those strategies in their life, they will become stronger both physically, mentally, and emotionally stronger to deal with what's coming at us in this world today. I mean, if you're asleep, you're obviously asleep if you're not being 100% aware of what is happening around us. Our government is printing trillions of dollars to comfort everyone. Everything is basically given away for free. If you're in the middle class, you are basically being broke by the folks that don't want to work, right? But I'm here to tell you, this is about weight training. I mean, I could rant on that for days, but weight training, it is so important because see, when you're physically strong and you're mentally strong, your kids have that pillar, that, that rock to cling to when things get tough. You see, when dad's weak, fat, and soft, he can't deal with anything. He'd rather eat, he'd rather eat than deal with his issues head on, right? And I like to tell guys all the time, you can't go around it. You have to go through it. There's no other option. There just really isn't. You have to understand that when you're weak and soft, your kids are going to be weak and soft as well. So as men, it's important for them to see you in the gym. It's important to see you getting up early and hitting the iron before work. Or whenever you go hit the iron, they just know that dad's going to go hit the gym. Now, your gym might look like cycling. Say you have some sort of mobility issues or some damage to your body. You've had a car wreck or whatever. So be it. At least it's some sort of physical activity. Okay, dad can't weight train. That's fine. Dad can road. He can definitely get on a road bike and pedal for some miles, right? Dad can definitely go hiking. Dad can definitely go do these things other than sitting on the couch and scrolling his phone and streaming shows and eating garbage. It is your duty as a male to show strength for your tribe. Okay. One way to express that strength is through weight training. If you're physically weak, you can build those strengths. You can go through some difficult challenges in the gym and build those strengths up. And guess what's going to happen? It's going to change your life forever. My friend, I promise you that I've watched hundreds of men's lives change because they've, they've started weight. They just started weight training. It's really simple. These guys are supplicating. They are they bend the knee to everyone that they come in contact with. Uh, they put everyone in their life but themselves first. They, they get on the iron and they start getting around guys that are doing something with their lives. And guess what happens? These guys blow up as human beings. And what I mean by blow up is they literally explode. Okay. And then all the pieces like settle like dust. And then they, they kind of like rebuild themselves. And as they're rebuilding themselves, it's a great thing to see because you know what? It's like, boom, he starts getting into shape. And, you know, my kids, they really don't respect me, but I'm still hitting the gym. And then pretty soon it's like, boom, this past weekend with the kids, it was actually a really good weekend. And then boom, before you know it, hey, I'm getting along with my wife. Yeah. You know what? You're getting along with your wife now. It's because you're in shape, bro. You got a, you got a halfway decent physique. You don't look like 40 pounds of chewed up bubble gum hanging off your body with, with man boobs, right? You got a physique about you. She has something to actually desire. These dudes, they, they, it, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. These men, they wonder why their wives won't have sex with them. It's because they look disgusting, right? And their kids don't respect them because they don't look respectable. Now to society's, to decide to society's fault, you know, we all grew up watching Homer get disrespected for what, like 10 years of our lives. When we were young kids, we'd watch The Simpsons on Fox. And I'm here to tell you right now, Homer never had any respect. And, you know, unfortunately, TV shows have modeled that for men in America, especially America. I don't know about other countries because I don't live there. I, I live in the great USA. But I will tell you that men inherently follow that trait versus being that pillar of strength and showing the right way to do things to their for their tribe. You know, difficult challenges under the iron will yield you so much more results in just the physique. 
Okay. The physique is a byproduct of you growing as a human being. When you become strong and what I mean, brute, when I'm, when I mean strong, I'm talking about brutally strong, the brutally strong that you can deal with whatever comes your way. It's kind of like my buddy, Zach, man, he went through, man, this year, you know, everybody's crying about the coronavirus, right? This dude, I can't, I can't even list off how many things hit him at one time, but I tell you what he was doing all the time. He was hitting in the gym. He was training. He was handling his business in the gym. And you know, it's interesting, you know, the car wreck didn't hold him down. The move didn't hold him down. Uh, uh, liquidation of businesses and, and all this other stuff, nothing attacked him. His, his, his little tribe went through some personal things that I won't air out online, but I will tell you, I will tell you it's because he was physically strong and through that physical strength, he became mentally strong and he's already your mentally strong individual, but I will tell you that because of his physicality and his ability to endure and deal with things, that is precisely why he got through them. These men, men these days, you, you, I'm going to do it again and they're going to fall over. They're going to run and go hide. Okay. They're so passive and so weak. They even look weak. All right. They don't even look like men. They look like, I don't know what they look like. They, they look like clay, clay characters. You know what I mean? That you see on like clay, claymation on TV. They don't even look real. Okay. So when you're a male and you hit the gym and your kids see that, they see a, a guy that's like taking care of himself. They see a man that is being masculine. They see a guy that they can look up to. There is, there is a beacon of strength right there. And that is my father right there, 100%. And that beacon of strength being father gives them a sense of pride. And that pride is like fuel for them to develop into something more than what the average child is developing into. Because like I said earlier in the stream, there is a massive childhood obesity epidemic in America. And dads, it is your fault. Dan says, makes so much so, makes so much sense. Yes, sir. Dan is a guy that has definitely been through the through the ringer, and he is definitely swinging for the fence. And I'm super proud of Dan. You keep up the great work, my friend. I will tell you that when you're as a father, when they see you training, when they see that strength in you coming out, and they see you evolving, that they will change for the better. They will change and become human beings that will do something other than take from society. Okay. They're going to be contributors. And that's what it's going to take is fathers to lead the way. Okay. You know, family is really not my wheelhouse. I mean, I'm a, I'm a father of one daughter, a lover to death. I got a wife. I've got a relatively small child, you know, Zach Small and Anthony Migarino, they're all about the parenthood thing. Hit those dudes up. If you want to talk parenting, I'm talking about weight training and why you need to weight train. If you have kids, this is 100% so important because these kids these days have no direction in life, okay? And this is just my personal opinion. You show me a guy that has kids that's got his act together on the weights and in nutrition and in his life, and he his life is almost in, together, okay? And his kids are flourishing. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because they see dad and they know dad is there for him, for them, him or her, excuse me. They know that dad is there to protect them because he's strong. They know dad's going to do whatever it takes to make sure that the things that are needed are there. They know that dad is going to do whatever it takes. And that is because when we look at our dads, we see strength. Okay. But if you look like chewed up bubblegum, I'm here to tell you, I'm here, I'm here to tell you that you have no respect. Your kids are looking at you and they're wondering what the heck's going to happen next. My wife says, what about divorced dads who what about divorced dads who trying to show the kids the right way and the ex-wife sabotages it? That is a great point. I will tell you the reason why my wife brought that up is because I experienced that myself. Um, when I started weight training, and I'm talking about seriously getting into weight training, you know, my ex-wife, you know, she had different ulterior plans for our daughter. And it's interesting, you know, th that poison was injected into my child's mind. But I will tell you that men, if you're a divorced father, you stay the course. You keep hitting the iron. You keep doing what it takes on the day to day. You keep doing what it takes on the day to day to get what you need from that iron, from that time in the gym, because your kids will wake up one day. Their eyes will open. They're going to realize, hey, mom's poisoning dad. Okay. 
they're po- they're, she's poisoning me against dad. I'm here, and I'm here to tell you right now, it will happen. Okay. It's tough right now if you're a divorced father and you've been through the ringer with the ex, but it will change. I promise you, your kids will wake up. It took my daughter till she was about 13 years old. We were kind of like on the fence there. Uh, you know, mom is a pretty much uh, uh, the bestie instead of a parent. And it was a, d- a tough situation, but, you know, we just stuck through it. And I kept encouraging her. I'm like, hey, you got to come to the gym. Hey, you got to come to the gym. And guess what? One day my daughter said, hey, I want to go to the gym. And for the first for the first, I don't know, I would say a couple of months of the gym, she didn't really like the gym that much. And guess what? I will tell you, I will tell you that after that first couple of months of working out with me and training with me, we got her a trainer and guess what? She took off from there. JB from Omaha listening in. Great topic. Children don't know what a real man looks like. It starts and ends with the man. Dads need to hear this message. My friend, this man, this JB right here from Omaha I'm here to tell you, JB, you just broke YouTube. You just threw about 50 gold bricks at the world with that comment right right there. Men, it is our responsibility to show our tribe what is right. What is right is being physically strong and being mentally strong and having those successes come one right after the other because you're taking care of your business and you're taking care of yourself. You know, it's interesting. I I listened in on a call last week, and I'm not going to say who that call was with, But I will tell you that what the man told me was this. He he told a whole group of people. He said this in particular. He says, you will have zero or limited success if you are out of shape. Go get in shape at all costs. And it's interesting to me because, you know, he's he's more talking about the business aspect. And I'm more talking about, you know, why your children need to see you. But that is so true. If you want respect in the business place, if you want respect in the bedroom from your woman and you want respect from your children. You need to look the part, men. Gents, it's not hard. Get on that iron and start working out. If you don't know how to work out, talk to somebody in the gym. Reach out to the gym owner and say, hey, who would you recommend to coach me here? There's a bazillion. We have social media. We have supercomputers right here at our fingertips. I'm hearing to tell you right now, there is no reason at all. There is no reason at all for you to have actionable advice Right now, you could even get on YouTube and look up training moves if you wanted to. I promise you, the only thing limiting you right now is you. You need to make the choice other than I'm going to scroll my phone and stream shows and order food. Oh, it's, I don't even know what's called Dine Dash or something like that. They, they have these food delivery services now. It's crazy. But I will tell you, there are so many different options other than that. But it's a choice. And as men, you have to make the choice that's the harder choice. You have to let that comfort go. You have to realize that it is up to you to show these children the way of strength. The way of strength is hitting the gym, okay? Unfortunately, you know, I guess eons ago, you know, the tribe would see dad go out and hunt and gather that he'd take down the woolly mammoth. Well, we don't have woolly mammoths to take down anymore, right? So how do you express yourself in your masculinity? You get into the gym. You weight train and these children are going to see that and they're going to say, man, man, dad is strong. I want to be like dad, even the girls. Okay. Even I have a little girl, I have a daughter. She's 17 and a half. I promise you, I promise you, men, get off the couch, put the phone down and put some work in under that iron and change your life. It is a choice. You are choosing to be fat, weak and soft right now. It is a conscious choice that you are making. And that is such a sad thing. I will tell you, I will tell you that you can change it by making the choice today to believe in yourself, to savagely go out and take what you want from this world. You need to understand that you are worth so much more than Netflix or or social media platforms. You are a man that's on a mission of growth, okay? And if you have children, you definitely are on a man on a mission. You are definitely a man that has people looking to you to understand what is right and what is wrong. If you don't, if you aren't the guy to break the chains for your children and show them the right way and what right looks like and what strength looks like, they're going to get that information from somewhere else. I promise you. Okay. Now, when you get under the iron and you start lifting weights and those kids want to start hanging out with you in the gym, that is the exact moment when they say, Hey, I want to go with you, dad. That's when you say, of course, let's go. Okay. I'll go tomorrow. 
Okay, we're going tomorrow. I promise you, I promise you, you take those kids to the gym and they will have a ball. They don't have to really lift weights. They could just go and hang out with you and watch you lift weights because number one, they've seen you put the work in on the iron and they've seen you go to the gym day in and day out and they see dad getting stronger and they see him committed to something and he sees they're starting to see some respect from his peers and from general society and his day-to-day -day interactions. They're going to want a piece of that. So they're going to go to the gym with you and they're going to see you work out. The gym policy generally should, unless they're infants, okay, that's, eh, that's kind of borderline. But I'm here to tell you, almost any gym in America, if you take your kids with you, they'll let you roll with your kids in the gym, okay? My wife says, a man who is in shape is a man who, is, who demands respect. A man who is out of shape demands nothing, especially in business and in relationships. 100% that is coming from a female gentleman. Wake up. It is time to wake up and understand that you are making the choice to be soft, weak, and lazy. You can definitely, definitely, definitely do what you want to do uh, if you just apply yourself and put your mind to it. Knowing, especially if you have kids, your time is running out. You know, it's interesting, and I wanted to talk about time real quick while I'm talking about this topic. You know, I look up, and I'm literally counting down the nine weeks until my daughter graduates, and I'm like, geez, we went from this little sweet girl to a, a young woman who is, her her schedule is so busy now, and I have to, like, I almost have to, like, pencil in on her calendar when I can spend some time with her, and it's like, okay, we only got X more days, and then she's in college, and then she's really going to be busy, and it's it's... I only have so much more time to mold her and shape her. And I will tell you, Jimmy G says, but, but women love the dad, Bob. <laughs> yeah. Death, death to the dad, Bob, my friend, you are a living example. Look at your profile picture, dude. You have changed so massively. The dad, Bob thing is a joke. It is a cope for women to be fat and lazy themselves. Men need to be strong, period. There is no such thing as a dad bod. You choose to be fat, lazy, and weak. But I will tell you, speaking on my daughter again really quick, that I'm I'm losing that time, that that last little bits of time of influence. Now she's she's old enough now to where she's formed her own decision making, you know, I guess par paradigm. I can't spit say that word, or her own her own little matrix matrix of how she makes her own decisions and figures things out in this world. But I will tell you, I will tell you that. I see that time diminishing and I'm just so grateful that I pulled the trigger when I did and got her in the gym because she knows how to endure some hardness. Now she's had trainers, she's worked hard in the gym. And I will tell you that through that hard work, she has understood how to persevere through some of the other struggles she's faced in her life. And that's another reason why this is so important. If you're a father and you have children and you can't necessarily deal with the day-to-day -day struggles because you're at the office or you're at work or your schedule's too hectic, hectic, you can teach them that in the gym, okay? You can teach them that it's okay to be uncomfortable every once in a while. It is okay to put the devil down, which is the cell phone. That's what I call it in my house. Uh, you can put the devil down and go and endure some discomfort, but for your own benefit to make you a better human being, to be a stronger human being. And guess what happens? There's like this light bulb that goes off in their minds. It's crazy, right? These kids, they say, they go, man, this was, that was hard. And like, you know, the first couple of months, like I said, with my daughter, she kind of fussed and whined a little bit because it was hard. It was uncomfortable. She was sore, but then that light bulb goes off and they get a hold of it. And they're like, man, this is great. You know, and, and they see changes in the mirror and their confidence goes through the roof. And as a father, to see your children confident and strong and loving themselves, it is such a frigging gift, man. And if you have children, if, if they love, if, if you have children and you love them, I promise you, I promise you, your children, it, it is like to see them in that, in that moment of like, man, I accomplished that. I, I used to get these videos from her. Hey, I hit this new PR, check it out. Or I did this today, check it out, dad. You know, and obviously as a father, I'm super proud for her because she's going and enduring these difficult things, which is weight training and she's enjoying it. So what does that say? What does that say? That says that she has become mentally stronger. To me, it says, hey, 
you're doing the right thing. She's a little, she's becoming mentally stronger and more resilient to deal with the crazy things that happen on the day to day in this world. Because let's face it, as parents, we have to arm our children with more than just knowledge. They have to be strong, not only emotionally, but mentally, but also physically. I promise you that if your children are emotionally weak, physically weak, or mentally weak, they aren't going to make it. They just aren't going to make it. I promise you, it is your duty as a man that if you start showing your children what, what right looks like, and that's getting on the iron and cleaning up your diet and being around other men. And that's another great thing about men, right? With men in the gym, you start building that camaraderie, right? And then your kids come up there and they see dad flourishing and growing as a man with all these other men in the gym. How great is that? Now, if you train in the home, if you have a private gym, you're super blessed and I'm super envious of you. One day, I, that is my dream is to have my own private gym, gym at my residence. But if you train in the job, in the garage, or if you have a dedicated room, or if you have, I have one guy that I'm working with, man, he's a super strong guy. He started his own business this past year, kicking it. He's killing it. And I will tell you, he has his own weight set up at his job where he started his business. And uh, he gets up super early in the morning. He crushes the weights and then goes to work. Super proud of that guy, man. He has grown leaps and bounds since I've known him. But I will tell you that um, have somebody come over when the kids can see you training, right? Have somebody come over. Have someone come over and see dad interacting with other men, okay? Displays of strength. And your children are watching this. And they're going, geez, that's what right looks like. Maybe the phone isn't so important anymore, right? Maybe that Netflix show or that, well, I think it's called Fortnite or whatever it's called, isn't important anymore. Doing this with my dad is what's important. Hanging out with dad and wanting to learn, wanting to learn about the weights. Jimmy G says, is there an age too young to start lift, to start lifting? You know, there's a lot of varying information on this one, okay? Now, obviously, you're not going to roll your toddler up to the deadlift bar and say, okay, rip it for 135, give me five at 135. But you can, uh, at a young age, with these toddlers and these young kids, what you can do is you can get some silly bars, okay? And what I mean by that are generally they're used for like uh, older folks, and I call them silly bars. They'll, they'll be like four pounds, and they'll be a little barbell or something like that. And uh, or some light, lightweight dumbbells, like half pound to a pound. And you can get them at a young age and get them to start doing the movements and understanding the movement patterns. Young kids, believe it or not, are like sponges. Well, you have you have your own children. You realize that anything you say or do, they're like they're going to suck that bad boy up. So I'm here to tell you, to me, there is no age that is too young to expose children to the gym or to a healthy lifestyle. OK, the sooner, the better, as far as I'm concerned, because that's what it's going to take to change where we're going as a society. Society deems that everybody's going to be fat and lazy. Right. And I'm here to tell I'm here to tell you I'm here to tell you right now, guys, it is up to us as men to change that about society. Men need to realize. Men need to realize that their offspring, their children, whether it's boys or girls, and I'm about to share something from the chat. Your boys, boys and girls, they look up to dad. And when dad's strong, it's an amazing thing. Adam Freeman right here says, my boys love lifting with me. Even my, even my bookworm computer guy. Boom, right there. You just got, you guys, gents, or whoever watches this, you just had another 50 gold bricks thrown at your head right there. There is empirical evidence right there. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, your children will emulate your every move. And it's the choice is yours to be fat, lazy, weak, compliant, or be a man of value, be strong mentally, physically, and emotionally, and lead by example. It takes us as men to show the way. They are completely lost. They are, let me repeat this again. Your children are going to be completely lost in this world if you do not show them the right way. It says your trainer's four-year-old son is a perfect example. Amen to that. My coach brings his son uh, to when I'm getting coached. Uh, he's a divorced dad, and he's really going through it with the ex. But I will tell you, uh, he brings his son with him, 
and he's constantly around us when we're working. It doesn't matter if we're doing capacity work on Saturdays, if we're doing uh, dynamic upper, dynamic lower, heavy legs, heavy press, whatever. That boy's around, and that young man, that young boy right there, he's four years old. He's always encouraging me. And one thing he has learned from his father is how to encourage others, okay? His father is a, a man of amazing strength and talent. And I will tell you that that four-year-old boy, and he understands, you know, okay, better not touch that. I can touch this. I can do that. I can go over here and do this, but I got to stay away from that. And that's the thing. These kids will learn this if you guide them in the right direction. Expose them as young as possible. OK, now, obviously, you know, if you're a father and your kids are their teens, they're going to be a little bit more resistant because they're already set in their ways. So if you have younger kids, you know, and, and I'm talking, you know, it, like four years old on up, um, definitely start exposing them to weights, you know, and, and training because, see, they're going to see dad and he's strong and he is definitely going they are definitely going to follow your example yes he does when i run my laps around the building it's about a half mile that little boy will try and jog with us it's impressive but i will say as you are why you are training and your children are watching you they will emulate you it is so important to understand that and how this is how we're going to change things in society today this is how we're going to change people one tribe at a time. Okay. You know, we always hear these like little things that say, okay, change the man. You can change the, the tribe. You can change the community. You can change this, the country and state and all that. I'm more focused on your children right now and getting you to understand that right now, if you're, if you have, and, and the folks that are watching this live, I know the kind of guys that are watching this live. These dudes are killers, man. These guys are on the weights. They're working on themselves all the time. I'm talking to the guys that might scroll through YouTube later down the road and say, who is this guy and what is he talking about? I'm talking to you. The guy that might say, you know, hey, I am a little overweight. I've let it go. I need to get back into it. This is your call to action right here, my friend. The choice is yours to lead by example for your tribe. Your children need you to lead by example. Be that example of strength and what right looks like. Okay. There's a difference between myself and other men that lift and men that do not lift and take care of themselves. You can look at me on the screen. I look relatively healthy. I am 48 years old, okay? I can squat two and a half times my body weight. I can deadlift almost three times my body weight. I can press double my body weight on the special occasion. I'm almost back to that. I'm working on that with my coach. But I will tell you, I will tell you that it's doable if you choose to do it. And your kids need you to choose to do that. They need that. These kids are going to be so screwed when they grow up if they have a weak father that it does not display those masculine traits like weightlifting and camaraderie with other men. It is so important for these people in this day and age to understand that. I can't impress it enough. You know, and it's interesting to me, you know, when my wife and I go places, you know, in social situations, it's almost like our physiques will command some respect out of the crowd. It's amazing to see. And it took a few times of me understanding that it's okay that I look a little bit different than guys and that I'm, I'm relatively lean or I'm ripped up or, or my wife's jacked up or ripped up. You know, it commands a position of respect and admiration because you know what? You can't buy this. You can't buy it. And that's the thing is in this society, we are a society of instant gratification. And when you start lifting weights, it takes time. It takes time to build muscle. It takes time to get lean. It takes time to get strong. It also takes time to get fat, but you're making that conscious choice. Okay. You're choosing, okay, I'm going to be this way other than this, other than this way. Okay. And, and that's what I'm trying to impress on you. When your kids see you making those poor choices. Okay. When the kids see you making poor choices, they're going to follow your footsteps to a T. People always sit back and wonder, well, why didn't that mm -hmm. child turn out to be more, more so than what they are today? Well, look at mom and dad. And then I'll also show you the kids that have turned out to be great human beings that have contributed majorly to society. And mom and dad may not have been the best, but they made all the right choices for their kids. They did the things that were hard. They made the tough calls and they did the hard work. Okay. And that's all it's about right there, right? Is how are we going to form these little people into people of strength? Because when you get old and gray 
and your big butt's in a wheelchair or on a walker because you can't walk so you haven't taken care of yourself, guess who's going to take care of you? Those kids. I'm here, I'm here to tell you right now, your kids are your biggest asset. Everybody's always chasing dollars. And, and yes, rightly so. I talk about money all the time on the growth cast. I will tell you money is important, but one of your biggest investments in you is showing your children the what, what right and wrong looks like. And, and it takes you leading that example. Jimmy C says, and as a father of daughters, the quality of men my girls bring into their lives will be in direct proportion to the quality of man I am. Boom. Jimmy G, Jimmy G just came in from like 52,000 feet and dropped like 10 nuclear bombs on YouTube right here. Amen to that. I will tell you, my little girl, my daughter, she's been dating the same boy almost a year. And he's quite a little ball of masculinity, right? He's kind of an outcast in the school because guess what? He doesn't look like chewed up bubble gum. He doesn't whine and cry. This boy hits the iron. He's also on the BGJ mat. And he's a very masculine kid. So he has a not very much in common with these other kids because, the you know, the, most of the boys at school, they have that JB, that Justin Bieber haircut look. And they look kind of fair and that kind of fem, feminine. You know, they got that swashbuckle walk or whatever. This boy here, you know, he's the complete opposite. You know what I mean? I, I will tell you that it's an impressive quality you know, because that's one of the things my wife and I would talk about when she was starting to date. They're probably going to watch this live stream later. So, well, but I will tell you, um, Jimmy G is 100% right. Your children, especially girls will bring men into their lives that are likely going to be similar in characteristics to you and your behaviors. Okay. What does that look like? Okay. Either your chewed up bubble gum and scared of everything in this world, or you're a masculine man that is muscular, mentally and emotionally strong, and leads from the front, okay, your daughter will definitely have a better chance of being a successful human being and, 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 and having a, a successful relationship with someone based on the decisions you're making right now and what she's watching. It is so true. I mean, this kid's a good kid. You know, he comes from good stock. His family's a good kid, good family. And I will tell you that Jimmy G's statement right here is 100% on point and correct. Now, for the little, for the gents out there that have young boys, once again, it's the same thing. I would also counter this as well for young boys, Jimmy G. I would also say that if you're a masculine man and you weigh train and you take care of yourself and you're handling your business and your boys model themselves after that, they would be more likely, they would be more likely to find a young woman or woman and bring them into their lives that is going somewhere with themselves as well. Because let's face it, right? Most of these kids are going to be quitters when they grow up. Okay. Everything has been handed to them. Okay. All they have to do is show up on the field and they get a friggin' trophy. They don't have to play. They don't have to compete. They just give them everything. OK, so these kids are going to be a bunch of quitters. The first sign of adversity or difficulty in their lives. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to fold up like lawn chairs. OK, and that's going to be the difference right there. Whether you have a daughter and you're displaying these masculine characteristics and you're weight training and she goes with you to the gym and she sees how you're come. You have that camaraderie with the gym and the gym vibe and everybody giving that love. It's like a little family tribe or you have a young man. It's the same thing. OK. You are teaching your child not to be a quitter, okay? You're not giving it because, see, the thing is, is the iron doesn't give. The only thing the iron gives is pain, okay? It gives challenge. It gives failed test after failed test. How many guys have tried to hit a weight right here? How many guys have tried to hit a weight and failed? It doesn't mean I said, okay, well, I couldn't hit the squat for 425 for five, so let me go ahead and just quit squatting for the rest of my life. No, I sat back and studied the bar and figured out what I was doing wrong. And I, I'm working towards that number again. It's because I'm not a quitter. Okay. I'm after it. I want it. And that's the point I'm trying to make. These people in this day and age are so soft. You give them the least bit of adversity. They're going to quit. That's why we have so much keyboard warrior going stuff going on on the, uh, on social media platforms. People talk so much trash, okay, 
They talk so much yak yak. Okay. But they wouldn't dare say it to your face, especially if you have your stuff together, whether you're mentally or emotionally strong or you're physically strong. It doesn't matter. They see you. And what do they say when they see you in the grocery store? Oh, well, let me get out of here. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get in your way there. You know, I'm here to tell you right now, there is going to be a society of quitters. Don't let your child be one of those quitters because you chose to be fat, slobby, and lazy and not get off your butt and go get into the gym and show them the what, what right looks like. Because I'm here to tell you, that's what matters most. Your life is already done deal, my friend. Okay, if you're in your 30s or in your 40s, if you don't have it figured out by now, you need to start figuring it out because guess what? The time that you have to get, get it correct is getting smaller every day you wake up. That time frame of you being able to change who you are as a man is getting smaller and smaller. Now, you'll hear the positive affirmations all over the Internet saying, oh, well, the, there's always a new day tomorrow and you can always change. Well, why put it off till tomorrow when you can start today? You know, that's my call to action to anybody that might watch this or is watching it now. If there's something that you're lacking, especially in the gym aspect, take a look at it. What are you trying to get done in the gym? Are you trying to lose some weight? Are you trying to build some muscle? Are you looking for that perfect world? Like my man, Adam says, and he says, you know, I want to lose fat and build muscle. You can do it. You just have to problem solve and figure it out, but you have to make the choice to commit to it. You know, and are you going to be sore? Absolutely. Is it going to suck for a while? Absolutely. And after it doesn't suck for a while, guess what? It's going to suck some more, but you're going to keep showing up because you've made the choice to invest in yourself. And that's how you savagely take from this world. Okay. So many people refuse to step up and savagely take what they want from this world, whether it's wealth, health, or relationships. It doesn't matter. Any of those three right there, we all lay down on. Okay. Oh, she's too pretty. I can't approach her. There's the relationship aspect. Oh, I don't think I'm qualified for that job. I don't think I can make that money. There's the there's the wealth aspect. Health. Oh, that weight's too heavy. Or going to the gym more than three days a week is too hard. There's the health aspect of it right there. Be a savage in those three things right there. And if you have kids, your kids will be stone cold killers when they grow up. They will take whatever they want from this world because they have learned how to be savagely pro them first. Okay. They will be strong as human beings, resilient to the crap that comes to them on the day to day. Jimmy G says, are there any considerations for diet for growing kids? A healthy diet is a healthy diet, but I'm not sure if there's anything to consider to think about when it comes to kids. So here's the deal with kids. Kids are many human beings, right? Now, obviously, if your toddler, <laughs> let's see, obviously, you're not going to put your toddler up on stage. You know, kids need to, when they're smaller, they need that extra weight on them because, you know, hey, they're growing. You know, you want them in a calorie surplus, plus, excuse me, plus, excuse me, didn't mean to say that calorie surplus. So that's why when you see like kids and I'm going to get a little technical with this for a second. When you see little itty bitty babies, when they first come out of mama, they're not really like that, that bulked up yet. You know, they haven't had that good, that good buttery milk from mom yet. But after about a, about a month of that good buttery milk from mom, how do those babies look? They're all blowed up, man. They're like little mini bulking bodybuilders. They're all swole up. And that's because they're in that, that, that energy surplus, that calorie surplus that's going to allow them to grow. Now, when these kids are, you know, in their younger years, anything I would say from like nine and under, nine and under, I promise you, being in a calorie surplus, as long as it's not excessive, and what I mean by excessive is, okay, uh, for breakfast, we're going to have Lucky Charms. Uh, I packed your lunch today for school, and there's a Lunchable and a Fruit Roll-Up and a Capri Sun. And then when you get home from school, okay, we're going to have some Nilla wafers and some apple juice. You know, I mean, there's different ways to, to make sure that they're meeting their calorie needs, right? So if you switch them to a more healthier lifestyle when they're younger, it'll be easier and infinitely easier when they're older. I did that with my daughter as well. You know, I let her have some of those foods that kids love, but I also gave her, like my child was eating like steamed spinach at like five. Okay. She was eating asparagus, mushrooms, all these different kinds of vegetables and meats, you know, fish, lobster, steak, chicken. It didn't matter. She's even wolfed a couple oysters here and there in her younger years. She won't touch them now because, you know, she's, she's a teenager and she's like, no way, dad. But I will tell you that from nine and under that little bit of a calorie surplus isn't an issue. The kind of calories you're giving them at nine and under matter though, you know, definitely, you know, the more wholesome, the better. 
Now, when they get above 10 years old, uh, you can start trimming them down and having a more adult style diet. And what does that look like? Meat and vegetables, man. Definitely. When it comes to kids, meat and veggies and activity, they will grow up lean and strong. Now, if we slide in, you know, well, we're going to have uh, a couple of Twinkies for lunch every other day of the week. And then we're going to have burgers on the weekends and pizza twice a night, twice a week. You know, that's when the metabolic issues start showing up for these kids. And it's weird. And I'm glad you brought that up. It's really difficult in this day and age because these kids, it's amazing to me. It's amazing to me. These kids, everything they do, especially school related, they associate with food. It is the craziest thing I've ever seen. When I was growing up, uh, we had a meeting after school or we had like football or, or a lacrosse meeting. There wasn't pizza. They, they cater pizza into these kids now. Uh, you go to a football game and you're a cheerleader. Guess what? The, the cheer moms are bringing snacks and all this stuff, you know, and it's crazy to me. It's crazy to me because all these, all these calories they don't need. Uh, when I played soccer, you know, you were lucky to get a half of orange, like a couple of orange slices at halftime. Now you see your kids playing soccer at halftime. They got like what? They got like pitsy sticks, juice boxes, cheese. It's all these little snacks. I mean, these kids are running it off on the field, but then they're constantly being refed. So what I what I would encourage you to do if your children are younger, let me go back to that real quick. Uh, I would think I would think that you would want to get them on the meat and veg diet as soon as possible after they've gone through that transitional stage of that young growth from one to nine. OK, and, you know, and that means, hey, it's steak, chicken, potatoes, green vegetables, you know, uh, having the good stuff and then occasionally mixing in the things that kids love to eat. I'm not saying be a food. Uh, I can't say that word because we're online, but um, being a so strict with nutrition that you can turn them off as well. And I will tell you, uh, being in the bodybuilding lifestyle, my wife and I fell on that pitfall with our daughter. There was some resistance and some hesitancy there. Because of the simple fact is, is we ate so clean all the time that the only time she could have any kind of BS was when, when she was out with her, without her, without out with her friends or at an event or something like that. I will tell you that if you mix in and sprinkle in the good stuff, your kids will likely be more apt to be thinner or well on their way to being in good shape versus metabolically compromised and obese. Um, it is, it is super important to understand that, you know, kids definitely need that calorie calorie surplus when they're younger. <clears throat> it's my wife says getting in shape will give you the confidence to succeed in all those areas. Yes, that, yes, it will. Kids, your men, your kids are watching you. It is so important to show them what strong and strength looks like. Um, if you're not, like I said earlier in the stream, if you have not weight trained before, definitely hire a coach. Don't go in there and kill yourself and blow your back out or rip an arm off or something like that. Uh, get someone to teach you the ways. Um, it's super important. Um, definitely get around, you know, men in that gym and, and, and build that camaraderie and friendship. When I walk into the gym, I get told good morning at least five times before I even start doing any kind of work. It's amazing. My tribe is like a family. OK, all the way from the guy working the desk to when I get to my coach. And I will tell you. Uh, that's the one benefit of having a gym to train at. Um, it doesn't matter where you're training. It could be a planet fitness. Uh, you know, when you start training and you go at a certain time at a certain day and you go on these certain days of the week, guess what? You're going to start seeing people. Hey, I've seen him in here. He was in here the other last week at this time. It takes you, it takes you as a man to let your nuts drop just a little bit and walk up to that guy and say, Hey man, I'm Phil. Nice to meet you. I've been seeing you in here. I haven't really trained that much. I'm pretty inexperienced, but I see you got your, your training game on here. Is it cool if I work out with you or work in with you? Nine times out of 10. And I give that one, that one in there because there's, there's, there's always an a-hole. Uh, but nine times out of 10, that person's going to be like, hey, nice to meet you, man. Yeah, you can work in with me. And you build a relationship with that human being. OK, and if your kids are watching that, guess what? If your kids are watching you communicate to a complete stranger and then working out with that individual, guess what happens? Oh, the light bulb goes off in your child's mind. It's OK to approach other people and ask. It's OK to ask and talk and then do something with someone else. 
Okay. Because see right now, kids are so dumbed down with these. They don't even know how to have a communication. They don't even know how to have communication. It's interesting when people come and visit us, you know, they come to our home. And that's the one thing they say about our daughter. They say, gosh, she, she's, she's, she loves to talk. She'll talk and she'll talk to anybody. And I say, absolutely. You know, it's not, let me text you. It's let me talk with you and let me learn from you or let me teach you something, right? And you're passing that on to your kids. Your kids are going to see this and see this behavior in you and they're going to emulate it. The choice is yours, gents. The choice is yours as men to show them how to do it, okay? And it's super simple. It takes you getting outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, you just started in the gym and that's one thing, but then it takes the next level of discomfort and that's getting to know people. Because guess what? Every man's an island. Not. Every man is not an island. You got to get over that thing in your mind, that mental roadblock that you have there, and start approaching people and having those conversations. Don't be so afraid. Let that fear go and start speaking to people. Okay? Your kids are going to see that in you. And guess what? You know, maybe one out of five conversations like that might not end well, but who cares? You did it. And off those off those five times, you've netted four solid friends or four solid acquaintances or four solid people you can do something with in the gym. Okay. Someone that can teach you something. And guess what? When you start weight training and doing that with these people, guess what? You start having conversations with them. Okay. So now we're starting to heal the mental aspects of your life. Okay. You're getting stronger physically. You're building your confidence under the bar. Your kids are seeing this change in you. And now you're having these conversations and, you know, you'll, you'll see certain people in the gym. You're like, well, Hey, how was your, what? And you start conversating and you find out things that are going on in these people's lives. And you retain a little bit of that information up here in your head. And you say, Hey, well, whatever happened with X, Y, and Z. And they're going to be like, you know, this is what happened. And you guys talk about it. And guess what? You extended the olive branch and guess what? That's going to start happening back to you. And guess what? It's because people actually generally care about what's going on. You just don't, you're too afraid to go make the, make the initiation and have the conversation. Okay. And that's why our kids are stuck like this on a text message all the time, because they don't know how to approach other human beings. Okay. So once you develop that and your kids are seeing you do that in the gym as well, it's like, boom, dad's not only getting strong, he's commuting. He's making all these friends. These people are cool. They're always pumping my dad up. Man, my dad's great. My dad is awesome. I can't even believe that that's my dad. How great would that be all behind the choice of doing the right thing and showing your kids what right looks like? It's super important to understand. You know, my wife says getting in shape will give you the confidence to, to succeed in all those areas. And that is 100% about confidence. This whole discussion is, you know, and giving that confidence to your children by what, letting them see you in the gym and training. You know, a lot of guys are like, oh, well, that's my time. Okay, bro, we get it's your time, 100%. Go hit the iron and train. But after it's your time, get on the phone like this. Hey, babe, why don't you bring the kids up so we can hang out for like 30 minutes as a tribe up here? Your wife brings the kids up and you guys all mess around on the weights and then you guys go home and have something to eat. That's how you combat that. You can still get what you need to get out of it. Okay. I'm not saying take the kids to the gym every day, but I will tell you once they start going to the gym and seeing how much fun you're having and they start getting that little mental switch flipped and they go, oh, okay, this is what normal is. They're going to start wanting to go with you and that's okay. You need to make time for that. And I know that's one commodity that none of us ever have. We're always too busy doing this and that and the other thing. Trust me, I am there. I, I'm living. Dude, the weeds right now that I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you guys can see my hands, but that's the grass is taller than my hands. I'm constantly in the weeds right now. I get it. 100% time is a very, very hot commodity in my life. But I will tell you that if you make that special time with your children, it'll pay off in spades. They will respect you more. And your children will be better human beings for it. They will see what right looks like. They will see that it's not normal to scroll on the phone all day. They will see that it's okay to face difficult things and overcome them and not run from them. Okay? 
it is so important to understand that the time you have with your children, it is so precious. Okay. And as my daughter, and this is coming from the heart guys, this is 100% from the heart. You know, I see my daughter maturing every day. I mean, heck her boyfriend picked her up today at like one o'clock and they let, had a wedding to go to. Right. I've, I have barely seen her all day. You know what I mean? And I see that. I see that time with her just getting smaller and smaller. That time that you have now is so precious. Don't throw it away. Don't waste it on social media all the time. Lead by example. Be that masculine leader of your tribe that they are they're dying for you to be. They want you to be that man for them. They want you to be the leader of your tribe. And they want to do exactly what dad is doing. That is how you savagely take what you want from this world in health, wealth, and relationships. And that is your legacy is teaching your kids how to savagely take what you want in wealth, health, and relationships by displaying those masculine traits, by showing the world this is how it's done, and being a strong, capable father to deal with anything and anything and everything that